I'm afraid I have a confession to make. I'm actually here undercover. March, now. I came to Quilt Club to gain the knowledge and insight to help build the best collection of quilting machines brothers made. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you I was undercover. Can you find it in your hearts to forgive me? Let's quilt. Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brand Ambassador, and I'm very excited for today's show. So we are live streaming on Brother Sewing and Crafting, Facebook and YouTube show, and you never know what's going to happen on Behind the Scenes. Well, actually, we're at your side virtually today, <laughs> and you got a little Behind the Scenes behind me. I actually have a class going on, and the ladies are all having lunch, so you just never know what you might see. But we have the fabulous educator. Sarah is joining us today. I just saw her project. You are going to love this. So... Just so you know, I can see all of your comments on Facebook and YouTube, so say hi, say where you're from. I see many of you rolling in already. I was laughing, some of you rolled in even before we were live, and your weather, oh goodness, I'll just stick with the sunny Southwest Michigan. <laughs> so say hi, and let's welcome Sarah to the party. Hi, Sarah. Hi, everyone. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, I'm so excited for today's show, and I was watching some of the first comments that rolled in. I didn't tell them what you're working on. I did in the, in the topic though. And the twin needle or double needle sewing, decorative stitching with that is so much fun. And you can do it on any machine. You're on the Luminaire, of course, the best of the best, but you could do it on any machine. And I think that's what everyone's gonna love, no matter what they have. Absolutely. I love that about this project too. And that was going to be one of the first things that I talked about is that, yes, I'm working on the Luminaire. I'm fancy, but you can work on any uh, brother flatbed machine, sewing machine up and down the line to do this technique. And it's pretty simple, but it's really fun. I've had so much fun learning it. So I hope today I inspire you guys and you know, as I'm showing you everything, if you have some ideas of how you would use this technique, drop a comment. I want to hear your ideas of what projects you would do with the twin needle stitching. I'm very excited about this. And also, I have Sarah's Instagram above us, too. So be sure after we're finished, when you share photos, to tag brother, tag myself, tag Sarah. We'd love to see what you're working on. So, Sarah, give them a quick preview of what you're going to be doing, because this is I love your samples. Okay. So... I think a lot of us have like a stand mixer in our kitchen and I hate when it collects dust. So a bowl cover is a really great way to keep the dust off. And I love to use scrap fabric as well. So using the twin needle stitching, my mind just kind of went to like making my own custom fabric with it. So I took my scrap fabric that was plain and kind of sad and I did the twin needle stitching all over it and then used that fabric cut out my bowl cover pattern. I made a really nice bowl cover for my stand mixer so that no dust gets in there and it stays nice and clean. And I have- I love that. I don't ever use my mixer, so that, that actually would look pretty good on the counter. It'll look- <laughs> It makes it look really pretty. It's adds like a fun pop of color to your kitchen. And of course you can match it. Like say, you know, I have a family member who has all red things in her kitchen. So if you want to match it to your kitchen, you could do that too. Um, I have this little one here. The yellow stitching is a little bit hard to see, but I combined a bunch of things on this one. So these lines down here are the twin needle. This is a decorative stitch. And then this is some embroidery. Um, and you can use it on any bowl. It doesn't just have to be a stand mixer. So if you make yourself a salad and you want to save it for later in the fridge, pop a bowl cover on, put it in the fridge for later. This is a great idea, Sarah. Ooh, look at that one. This one, again, I combined a bunch of things. So this is the twin needle stitching, these two right here. This one is decorative stitching in the middle. And then this is a little broccoli that I hand drew. I scanned it into my machine, turned it into an embroidery and threw it on here. Cause I love broccoli, no other reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. I think, I, I think I'd have to put some chop chip cookies on there or something like that. <laughs> oh yeah, That's a good one. Those um, are really cute. Yeah, so I did want to talk about one thing with the Luminaire really quickly. Um, and I want to let you guys know that I learned how to do the twin needle stitching with the playbook, the Luminaire playbook. So if you guys have a Luminaire and maybe you know how to use it really well, but you want to know how to do everything on it, 
the playbook is a really great tool to have. It has hundreds of projects um, that will teach you how to use every little feature of your machine. Um, so that's how I learned to do the twin needle stitching. And I just wanted to mention that really quickly. You can pick that up at your local brother dealer. Um, it's a, again, a really great tool to have. You know, I'm so glad you mentioned that. In fact, some of the girls here, uh, to, a couple of them have the Luminaire and one of them brought the new Luminaire book. It's fantastic. The projects in there are amazing. Great tutorial. I'm so glad you mentioned that. And guess what? You can actually call your brother dealer about that. Just call them up and they can ship it to you too, <laughs> which is even better. Oh. Awesome. Yeah, it is so great. I'm having a lot of fun learning because I'm new to the Luminaire. I'm new to the education team. So I'm learning with you guys how to use every little part of this machine. Um, so I want to show you some other ways that I use the twin needle stitching before we get into making the bowl cover. Um, my very first stitch sampler that I did, I cut it out and I made it into like a little coaster or a mug rug. Um, and one of the ways that I love to use the twin needle stitching is to use two different color threads. So I'm not sure if you could tell on here, but these are two different yellows. One of them is a little bit lighter than the other. Um, and I think it gives the stitching a really nice dimension and just adds a little bit of interest to um, your design. And another thing that I did was I made a face mask. So I stitched all the twin needle designs on here. Um, I think it makes this plain pink fabric look really interesting. And I've been wearing this a lot ever since I made it. Oh, you're muted. I'm like, so I love that mask. I was like so excited. I'll bet you've had people say, where did you get that? <laughs> yeah, thank you. I love it too. I love making face masks. I sold so many of them since the start of the pandemic, just the embroidered ones. They're, they're really beautiful. Um, okay, and then one other thing that I did was I took this pair of shorts and I took the pockets off and I used that double needle stitching to add really nice texture and design to that pocket. And then I did a little embroidery on this one to match. Oh, so it so added like... That's really cute. Thank you. So it added a nice pop of color and... Um, yeah, I love how these came out. So those are some of the ways that I've used the twin needle stitching. Um, the playbook uses it as a decorative top stitch. So that's another great way to use it. And again, like if you guys are any ideas popping into your head, let us know. Um, it's a really versatile uh, function of the machine. That's awesome. I just, uh, everybody's making comments. They've tried the twin needle. And by the way, happy anniversary, Arnell. She is on every Brother So's show and you're joining us for our anniversary. Happy anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary. <laughs> you can make a bowl uh, cover for your anniversary party tonight. Yeah, I'm honored that you're spending some time with us today. Everyone's loving those pockets idea. That So were those just ready to wear pants that you, or shorts that you just took the back pocket off? Yeah, my friend bought them. She didn't need them anymore. Um, she knows how much I love upcycling. So I took them off her hands. And yeah, I just um, took the pockets off. I opened them up. I stitched on them, embroidered on them, and then I sewed them right back on. Oh, so they're still, exciting. yeah, they're still functional. So you can still put all your stuff in there. <laughs> I love that. And Joanna, you're right. She says, I see Angela's uh, ideas spinning <laughs> every time Sarah gives me some more ideas. I'm like, oh, I love that. <laughs> um, OK, so let's talk bowl covers. So this project is very easy to do, um, but it's also going to allow me to show you guys how to set up the machine with the twin needle we can try out a bunch of different stitches and end up with a really beautiful bowl cover in the end. So you're gonna need a few basic supplies, um, some scrap fabric. I like to use the plain fabric so that your stitches will really pop on there. And you're gonna need your scissors, your ruler, your pins. You're gonna need some elastic. I think this is like a 5 eighths elastic that I'm using. Um, what else? I think that's about it. Now I have pattern paper, but you can use computer paper. And if you need something bigger than one sheet, just tape a couple pieces together. You can use newspaper. I happen to have pattern paper, so that's what I used. So the first thing you're gonna do is flip your bowl upside down on the paper and trace around it. Easy as that. We can handle that so far. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so easy. It's so easy. I promise. Um, <laughs> and then you're just going to measure an inch and a half out from that circle. And you're going to mark around and then draw another circle. So you're adding an inch and a half seam allowance. And that's going to allow us to sew the two pieces of, I don't know if I mentioned, you need to cut out two pieces of fabric. It's going to allow us to sew both of those together and then also create a tunnel for our elastic to go through. And then the last thing you're going to need to measure, or the only thing you need to measure really, is you're going to take your tape measure, you're going to measure around your bowl where you want the elastic to lay, and then you're going to subtract four inches from there. And that's going to be the measurement for your elastic. That's going to be how long you want your elastic to be. You want it to be a little bit smaller so that it will stretch and it will be tight around the top of your bowl and hold really nicely on your bowl. So that was minus four inches, right? Yeah, minus four inches. Minus four inches. So you trace your bowl, add an inch and a half of seam allowance, and then you measure around the bowl for the elastic and subtract four inches from that measurement. And that's it. <laughs> I don't have a pen, don't worry. If you're on Facebook, share this to your page. It's much easier to watch the whole replay. And also, if you're on YouTube, just subscribe to Brothers Sews, and you can come back and watch this anytime. So in case you missed your pen, you can go back and watch it. All right, there. <laughs> <Keep rolling. laughs> All right. Uh, so now let's go over to the machine, and I'm going to show you some settings for your double needle. All right. How to set it up. Oh, your machine looks good. I have to wake her up. She's sleeping. <laughs> so I am in embroidery mode right now. I have my embroidery unit attached and that is simply because I have nowhere else to store it. <laughs> I'm in a small studio, um, but I thought it was also important to mention that you can use the twin needle function with your sewing attachment and you could also use it with your embroidery attachment. All you need to do when you have your embroidery attachment on is go to the home screen and press sewing and the attachment is gonna move right out of the way for you. And then you have a really nice wide table to work on. So I have a little bit of sad news, but I think we're gonna be okay. Um, you cannot use your automatic needle threader with the twin needle. And this is really important because if you do try and use it, you're probably gonna break a needle and it's gonna be bad. I know we love <laughs> I know we love using our automatic needle threader, but you just can't this time. <laughs> I'm sorry. So a couple things that we need here. You need your twin needle, and this will come with the luminaire. Um, but if you if it doesn't come with your machine, it's pretty easy to find. Um, that's size 211 twin needle. And then something that also comes with your luminaire is the spool thread holder. This is gonna pop up and it's gonna hold both of your thread spools for both of your needles. Also an accessory you can buy for many of the brother machines. And then because we need to kick it old school and thread our machines by hand, I have this little guy. I know we all have a bunch of these in our sewing kit. You need a screwdriver and you're also going to need your end presser foot and this has a wider opening so that both of the needles will fit in there when you're sewing. So I'm going to zoom into my screen really quickly and show you um, a very important step. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to go into your stitch settings and you're going to turn on the twin needle function. And this is important because the machine won't let you use the automatic needle threader when you have your twin needle function set. So that's why we want to do this first, just in case you forget. I know we all have that muscle memory of just pressing the automatic threading button. Um, the machine will stop you from doing that once you set the twin needle function. So in our stitch settings, press the twin needle and that's all you have to do. Then automatically you see that your machine doubles your stitches here and you're good to go. So zooming back out, I'm gonna show you how you have it. Oh, am I echoing? Nope, no echo, it looks great. And I'm just admiring your beautiful table. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to set up the spool thread holder. Oh, great. I just yeah. saw somebody say, I have that, but I've never used it. And this is so simple to set up. I'm so glad you're showing this. 
Yeah, it's great. So this one for the Luminaire has two magnets on the bottom right here. And then right on the top of your machine, you can see the two magnets right here. And all you have to do with this uh, silver part facing the back, you're gonna just pop that right onto your machine and there it is, it's stuck on there and that's all you have to do. Then you have to pop these guys up. These will hold your, your thread and this is where you put the thread through. And today I'm gonna be stitching with two blue threads and I chose two different tones. So I did the light blue and the navy. So I'm gonna put these in here. Sorry if I'm blocking you guys a little bit. So you wanna thread from behind. So I'm gonna put that in so it's coming from behind your thread holder there. Okay. Now because you're threading at the top and not the normal place where you keep the thread, you're actually gonna take both threads and you're gonna run them through the bobbin winder um, holder right here and the tension, and that's gonna keep those threads tight as they run through the rest of the machine. Um, I find it easier to thread both of them at the same time, but once you get down to the bottom and you're ready to thread your needles, you wanna try and thread that left spool through the left needle and the right spool through the right needle. So that can be a little bit hard when you're using the same color thread, that's another reason why I like to use two different colors. It's easy to tell. See, my light blue is on the left and my navy is on the right. It's easy to tell which thread you wanna put in what needle. Um, Angela, do you wanna switch me over to that close up view? I would love to. So let me bring you here and add you there. I'm gonna add you in both places, but the volume on the other one's gone. So you're, um, let's see. There you go. How's that, Sarah? Good. Can you hear me? Yep. Perfect. Okay, so you are going to take your screwdriver and you're going to gently unscrew your needle here. This is, I'm taking out my single needle. And you're going to open up your double needle. This double needle is pretty cool because it looks like the single needle on the top. I'll show you in a sec. See how it's flat on the top, just like the single needle, but then it has two needles coming out of the bottom. So you're gonna gently put that in there and you're gonna tighten it. You can tighten it with your fingers, but I definitely strongly recommend giving it one good tighten with your screwdriver. Uh, even just yesterday, one of my presser feet came loose while I was stitching something. I must not have tightened it enough. And oop, and that will really just mess you up. So always take that extra minute to give it an extra tighten. Okay. And now I'm going to connect my presser foot back here. Again, give it an extra tighten. And I'm gonna raise that up and I'm using presser foot N again because it has that wider opening right here for both of the needles to fit. Okay. Very important, keep your needle tucked safely away. You don't wanna step on that or lean on that or anything. So I always wrap that up and put that to the side. Okay, now for the threading part, we're gonna put that through step number six and then we have to manually thread. <laughs> so I'm taking my left spool of thread through the left needle. Bear with me, I have not done this with a camera in front of me. And struggling guys. <laughs> There's nothing worse than trying to thread a twin needle while you're leaning over a video camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, I got one. I'm impressed. I would be there for, I would have to have it threaded before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I did it. Yay. 
All right, so we got both of them threaded. I'm just pulling them off to the side, and then I'm gonna load in my bobbin as well. And that has some matching navy thread. And there you go. You're, yes. Just a quick question. I want to know what size that double needle is. That is size 211. Perfect. That's Thank the size that um, brother recommends that you use. Yeah, and that and that works good on cotton. She was asking about cotton. That would be a good one for that. Yeah. All right, I'm going to switch back to my screen so we can poke around and take a look at um, our different options. Okay, so um, your machine will preview the stitches for you so you can kind of see what they look like, but I think they always look better when you finally stitch them out. So it's fun to just try out a bunch of them um, and see how they look on your fabric. But you can use many of these. Not all of them will work. And the machine will tell you if one of them is not available. Let's see. Nope, all of these are available. <laughs> I love like that feature. I love that it, it'll show you that because if you start stitching and it didn't tell you that, you'd end up breaking your needle. So that's such a great way. You can't, you can't screw up. That's the best part. Totally. Yeah. It's foolproof. So the machine will just give you a little sad face and be like, nope, don't use that one. <laughs> so, okay, we're moving on. All right. So I'm going to start off with one of these guys. Grab my fabric. If you want to switch me back to that up close view. Um, now, another good thing about working uh, in with your embroidery attachment is that I also don't like to use my presser foot when I'm doing this, um, this technique because you want to keep an even and consistent sewing pace that will give you the best result when you're sewing these. So I like to use my speed adjuster and just the start and stop button here. So I'm going to start and I really like to stitch out a bunch of different patterns all on the same piece of fabric. I think it looks really cool in the end. So we're just going to test out a bunch of stitches here. Again, you're just going to use your hand to hold that fabric steady. and as straight as you can. And there's our first stitch. That looks pretty cool. Again, you can see the two different color threads, the lighter blue on the left and the darker on the right. It gives it nice, uh, like a 3D look. That looks really cool, I love that. Now I want to show you guys one other tool that I like to use. Um, if we can switch back to my screen, sorry about the back and forth. I like to put on the laser thread guide. And what this does is this, um, we'll go back to the needle in a minute. This is going to put a straight line, right? Project it right on my fabric for me. So I can follow along and I can stitch more easily in a straight line. Another thing that you can do is use the subline, which is just a second laser guideline that will pop up on your fabric. And the cool thing about this is that you can basically set your distance to how far apart you want each of your twin needle stitches to be. And then you can line that line up and make sure, oh, that's a cool rainbow effect happening there. I don't think that comes with the luminaire, but it looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why that's happening, but... Okay. Hmm. It does. It always does that with video cameras. So that's always like the big joke. We'll say, "Hey, guess what? <laughs> the rainbow does not come with the machine, but it looks really cool." <laughs> um, so can you see the lines at all, or you can um, see them a little? Just barely. Barely, yeah. Well, so there's one line here, and then there's a second main line, and. That just allows me to line up that left line and keep an even and consistent um, seam or uh, space between the two stitches while I'm stitching. So I'm going to shut that off because we don't want to be looking at a rainbow the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a really cool feature to use. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch one more design. There's another one and you can always go in and you can adjust your width and your length for all of these stitches and you could get completely different effects um, even within the same stitch. So that's always fun to play with as well. Oh, that's cute. Anne was so, just saying that um, she said this would be really cool to do on a little girl's dress of smocking for a girl's dress. Yeah, definitely. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. So once you're done stitching as many designs as you want you're gonna place that uh fabric face down with your other piece of fabric that you cut out you're gonna pin those together and then you're gonna sew a half inch seam around the whole circle but you want to make sure to leave a little bit of a gap so that you can flip it inside out and then when you flip it inside out you're gonna give it a nice press this one i didn't i stitched half but i kind of like the effect of that too and you are going to stitch another half an inch line and this is going to be the tunnel that your elastic is going to go in. So you're going to stitch that all the way around. You don't need to leave a gap there. And then you're going to take your elastic that you pre-cut and you're going to put a safety pin on the end and that's going to just be really helpful when you're guiding the elastic through your tunnel here. So you're going to use that opening that you left when you made the first seam and you're just gonna push the elastic all the way around. There we go. Like that, using, you can really feel that um, safety pin in there and it moves really easily through the fabric. So that's a really good trick to use. Once you get it all the way around, you just have to stitch the two ends of the elastic together and then you're gonna close up the bowl cover. And the end result will look like a cute little shower cap. <laughs> and this is going <laughs> to... That does look like a shower cap. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Or a little doll's hat. I mean, we could really get... <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can make, you know, this could be like a little American Girl doll beret or something. <laughs> that is um, so cute. Yeah, so then it stretches. Oops. <laughs> Very stretchy then it stretches real easily right over your bowl. That is adorable. And there you go. That is our bowl cover, nice easy project, and a really great way to use the double needle stitching. That is really cute, Sarah. Everybody's here to make comments about that. They have a few questions for you on the double needle too. But I yeah. love that cover. Thank you. So on your machine, uh, and this was a really great tip, Patty said, hey, by the way, never use a double needle unless you check to make sure it's wide enough to fit into your needle plate. So one thing that people might not realize is that there's two different needle plates that go with the Luminaire, some of the other machines as well, but there's a single mm. one, and I don't know if you mentioned that, but uh, do not use a twin needle with that. I did not mention that. Thank you for that, Patty. And actually, while you have your luminaire up there real quick, I see, unless I don't want to mess up your mojo, but that little button, could you just point out the button if they wanted, if they had a different needle plate on there, how easy it is to change that? Just oh, definitely. That yeah. Yeah, so the luminaire has the quick release uh, needle plate. So you just pull that little lever and you can see it pops right up. And my machine is yelling at me. You're really supposed to turn off the machine before you pull this out, but it is very easy to just pop that out. That like is, that. I, that's, I think that hands down is my favorite. I can handle threading the twin needle if I can take the twin plate off that easily. Yeah, and then it just pops right back in. I love that. Oh, Lorraine said she wants to do this out of silk and wear it as a nighttime bonnet. Keep your hair in line. I like that, Lorraine. <laughs> That is a great idea. I actually need one of those. So that might be what I'm doing after this broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that you're going to see a lot of variations of this, Sarah. Yeah, that's great. Do you want to come back to us? Yes. That was a great color to use, too. I love that. Okay, so let me take this out. Here you go. Yay. Hello. So 
<laughs> There's a couple of comments on here because somebody was asking, can you do this out of other fabrics besides cotton? Now, Lorraine just mentioned silk. You could pretty much do it out of anything. Now, uh, did you, with the cotton, did you use any stabilizer behind that when you did the uh, twin needle or would you recommend that if you're using a lighter weight fabric? I, I didn't use any today, but I do recommend it. It does um, pucker a little bit if the fabric is really lightweight, which this one is. Um, I've been able to get by just by giving it a really good steam after I'm done stitching, but a stabilizer would definitely be helpful. And some, let's see, there's another one. I, I just missed it. <laughs> I'm going to put, by the way, while I'm doing this, I'm putting up her website down below here. She has a great website. Brother Sews has new things on their blogging, both crafting and sewing blog. That's down here as well. Everybody's saying cute cover. Great project. <laughs> yes, I agree. Louise loves the Luminaire. Uh, Pat, what's the big difference between the XP1 and the XP2? Hmm. Not really anything if you get the upgrade. You have to get the upgrade with the XP1. And then, then they're pretty close to the same. Yes. <laughs> I agree. Any other, any other tips for them, Sarah? Um, let's see. I know that was a little shorter than I thought it was going to be. I can go back and show you guys some other stitches. Um, the more heavyweight fabrics, I would say, work nicely with the the twin needle stitching comes out really nice and flat. So this is like a heavyweight denim. This is more of a heavyweight cotton. And you can use... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Sarah. No, it's okay. I was just going to say you can use um, cotton threads or poly threads, just depending on... Um, this is a cotton thread, so it has more of like a matte look. And then the poly thread has a little bit more shine to it. I love it. And... Trust me, nobody's complaining if it was a fast tutorial because if you can do it from beginning to end that quickly, that means that they can hang up from the show and make a whole bunch of those for, uh, let's say you could have a Halloween theme, you could have a Thanksgiving theme. Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's awesome. So if you guys have any last minute questions for Sarah, I'll, I'll just check because I know there's like a 20 second delay. Uh, Sarah's going to be traveling and working again in the dealers. I bet you're excited about that. I am. It's going to be my first time. So I'm excited to get out there. I'm going to be at the Pacific Quilt Show in Santa Clara. Um, I'm going to be at Quilters Headquarters next week uh, down in Kansas City. And then I'm going to be in Arizona a couple weeks after that. So I'd love to meet some of you guys if any of you guys are in those areas. Oh, that would be very cool. Back to the travel. Okay, I knew that the 20 second delay would bring in a few questions for you. Charlene wants to know, when you threaded the twin needle, could you show how you put the threads through the top bobbin tension? Oh, that's a yeah. good tip. Let's do it. All right. Oh, let me bring you back over here, sorry. No worries. I have to switch myself. Let's see if I can adjust the camera a little bit to get up close up there. Oh, I agree, Kathleen. It'd be good to take to a potluck. That'd be a really good gift, too, if you're bringing somebody a meal and tell them to keep it. Yeah. Oh, Dalia, if you have the upgrade for the XP1, call Brother Customer Service. You can message me. I'll give you the phone number, or you can go to their website. They will walk you right through it. It's super, super easy. I mean, it's so easy that you're going to be excited. <laughs> okay, so up here I'm grabbing both threads together. You can thread them separately, but I definitely find it easier to thread them together. So I grab both of them and then I put it through this holder right there, click it in there, and then this little tension spool, I just wrapped it around the back side there. And after that, you just thread the machine normally up until the needle threading part. Is that clear? Oh, that was perfect. And you know, right. I'm so glad that she asked that because so many times when we are working on the twin needle, nobody really sees, they're like, okay, I see, two, I see two needles, but how does that happen? So thanks, Sarah. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Kelly. Kelly says, any chance that Elastic will keep her hubby out of the Halloween candy? I doubt it. <laughs> 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 out of the candy. <laughs> 
I see someone asked where in Arizona. I will be in Tucson. Tucson, all right. Oh, I love Tucson. I think I got everybody. That was a great tutorial. Everybody's giving more suggestions for fabric. Vinyl, Sarah, yeah. this was an awesome tutorial. And all of you watching, don't forget you go back and watch this from beginning to end. I have a feeling, oh, I know, once someone asked, could you use a circular attachment with this? I've never used it with a twin needle, but I'm sure you could. Have you ever I'm tried it? Sure. I, I haven't tried it. I'm not sure, but break the rules. Go wild. Try it out. <laughs> I'd be able to because you just would snap that on. I've never tried it with a twin needle. I've done decorative stitches with the circle attachment. So try it and let us know how it works out. Share a photo. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's saying thank you. Um, here we go. Christine, you actually go behind the bobbin tension when threading. Not the bobbin tension, the upper tension. Yeah, the upper, um, what is it called? The the bobbin spool. Yeah. I'm, I'm at a loss for the right term. But you, you run just like you're threading your machine. Just like you're threading your machine. Uh, Tucson, okay. She wants to know more details. <laughs> <laughs> I... Yeah, I, I don't know um, off the top of my head the name of the dealer, but I will get back to you guys about that. That sounds fabulous. Sarah, this was an awesome tutorial. I'm so excited. I'm, it's great to see you again. And don't yeah, forget to go below. And she sells a lot of great products too. So if you don't feel like sewing it, go check it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Instagram, so be sure to tag us. And I'll just double check there aren't any last minute. Nope, everybody say these videos are so fun. I agree. Uh, B, what's the circular attachment? So B, I know that there's some previous videos on that. It's an attachment and it works on quite a few machines, not just the Luminaire. And it attaches to the machine and it's hard to explain because I don't have it in front of me. We'll make sure we have it on an upcoming episode, but there's a pin that sticks up. You put your fabric on it. And when you sew, it literally makes a perfect circle. It's like magic. So if you're afraid that your circle isn't going to be straight, but you know, you have those lines that Sarah showed you, even though it looked like a rainbow, <laughs> you've got the sew straight lines, you've got the grid. If you have the luminaire, there's a lot of options. I guess you guys are just going to have to come see one of these in person to see those awesome lines that pop up on your, your fabric there. Cause that's a really cool feature. I agree. And Kathleen, you know, so here's the deal. I'm just thinking about the circular attachment. Your machine isn't moving in a circle, just your fabric. So you're still stitching fabric. So you're still doing whatever you tell your machine, you're using the twin needle. And then it'll tell you, like she showed you, it'll give you the really sad face and say, this won't work. <laughs> or you can use it. So if you can use that stitch, you can use that on pretty much anything. So I, I don't know why it wouldn't work. I just, off the top of my head, haven't tried it lately. I didn't know. Yeah and it turned out cool oh cool. that would look good on those covers couching definitely yes this um this flower embroidery that i did on this pocket is actually a couching embroidery but i just didn't i didn't use any yarn with it <laughs> that's cool i was wondering i was going to ask you where you got that design but i was afraid to but i love it <laughs> yeah it's in the the couching embroidery section on uh on the luminaire and yeah, I didn't really know what it was, but I was like, this is pretty, I'm gonna use this. And then I later realized that it was meant for couching. And I was like, oh, it looks cool anyway. <laughs> so cute, Erin, how can the circle be straight? I know, so <laughs> your, your needle and your foot isn't moving, so it's still stitching. It's just your fabric that's going in the circle, kind of like if you're doing it by hand, but. It's just that pin that's kind of holding it in place, right? I have a feeling, Sarah, I know what your next tutorial is gonna have to be. <laughs> Yeah, that would be really fun. All right. Well, Sarah, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for joining us, brother. Thank you for letting your ambassadors and educators take over your YouTube and crafting. Let's see, sewing and crafting YouTube and Facebook page. I knew I'd get that in the right order. And if you're watching this later, be sure to ask questions because we always come back and check. And brother, thank you very much. And don't forget, you can visit your brother dealer if you're looking for that playbook. Thank you for mentioning that, Sarah. That book is amazing. Yes, I'm just going to show it again. And it's really, I'm so glad you brought that up because there was a playbook one that went with yep. the XP one and that sold out. And everyone was like, where is that? I love that. But there's such great tutorials in there. And now part two is here. Yes. And I'll just show you guys, this is the twin needle page. So this is how they used it in the book as a decorative top stitch. 
And then the book goes in and it tells you every little button that you need to press. It's a really great way to learn all these different techniques. I love that. I love that. So everybody's saying thank you. Josie, I see a lot of the Wolfpack in here. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Sarah, you have a wonderful day. Have wonderful travels. And all of you, don't forget to share your photos with us because we love to see them. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Yes. And until next time, I believe I will see you on Tuesday. It is awesome. Thursday. This week has been a crazy week this week. <laughs> yeah, thanks, everyone. Thank you, Angela. Bye, Sarah.